My name is Ian Donaldson and I work in the Bioinformatics core facility in the Faculty of Life Sciences. In a short series of videos I am going to be describing how to perform chip seek analysis using Galaxy. Galaxy is a web tool that allows you to run bioinformatics tools without needing to mess around with command lines. So it's really easy for people who aren't bioinformaticians to get a grip of their data sets. So what is chip seek analysis? Well the chip part stands for chromatin immunoprecipitation. This is a long established method to identify where a particular protein binds to the DNA of a genome. This is performed using a specific antibody to the protein or modification of interest. So generally you start off with a sample that is cross-linked to fix all the proteins to the DNA. This sample is then sonicated to produce fragments of DNA that may or may not contain the protein of interest. Using a specific antibody the idea is to enrich for the DNA that contains or is bound by the protein of interest. So at the end of the method one is able to remove the cross links and the product is DNA that is bound by the protein of interest. So you end up with a enriched DNA sample. Now on its own this isn't enough to put on a sequencer and it has to be amplified using specific methods. This stage is usually called the library preparation step. Now there are several fl flavours of chip seek analysis. Typically the investigator is looking to see where transcription factors bind or where histone modifications are located throughout the genome. There are also methods that look for open DNA such as in fair seq analysis or methylated DNA in methyle seq analysis. In my example I will be uh, looking at basic chips, chip seq analysis for a transcription factor. So now I'm just going to introduce the steps involved in a chip seq workflow and go into more detail in future videos. Firstly, we deal with the reads obtained from the sequencer. We first look to see that they are of good quality and then map them to an appropriate genome. A crucial step of the pipeline is to actually determine where proteins are likely to bind in a genome. This is usually called the peak calling step. Once we have some candidate regions for where binding is likely to occur, we would like to get some more information about where they are bound, for example, what genes they are close to. Also, as we know where the binding events are, we can look at the sequence they bind to in more detail and try to determine what sequence pattern is used for the protein to bind to the genome. Now, once we've, provide, once we've uh, looked at those steps, we can use Galaxy to make a reusable workflow, which is useful if you want to run this uh, chip seek analysis more than once. So to work alongside me on this video I'm assuming that you've already contacted the core facility to get an account on our instance of Galaxy uh, aka Golem. Uh, assuming you've done this you can access using the URL at the top of the screen. So 
what we're going to do now once you've logged in is to just briefly go through what Galaxy looks like and the sort of thing you can do. To run Galaxy I would recommend using either Firefox or Chrome as your internet browser. Uh, internet Explorer seems to have some glitches in it so I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, if you've not logged in before you'll see this screen and a note here just confirms that you need to have a user account to use this instance of Galaxy. Uh, login details can be obtained from Peter Briggs who works in the core facility with us. So I'm logging in, uh, typically you'll have your university account and the provided password. You can change the password at a later date in the user settings section up here. Okay, so here we go. So just a couple of things. Um, this central section when you first log in has got some useful information. Uh, particularly general Galaxy demos which will help you get started and uh, like I said Peter is the go-to guy for getting help about the running of Galaxy. Okay so the screen is divided into four sections. Along the top you can access different aspects of Galaxy so initially analyze data is where you'd start a, wor uh, a workflow. The workflow section which I mentioned is where you can access and create workflows to speed up future analysis. Uh, shared data is useful because you can access workflows created by other people if they've been shared um, and one thing to look at is the published pages which contains for example tutorials created by members of the core facility. On the left hand side of the Galaxy screen you can see all the tools that are available and there are a lot of them because each of these items will also produce a sub list. And this can be really daunting and you can get lost quite easily. However if you know the start of the name of the tool you're interested in you can use this search tool. So for example if we want to intersect two items of data you can start typing intersect and this will show you all tools that contain that particular um, that phrase. So for example the one we wanted was operate on genomic intervals intersect. So that's particularly useful. If you want to get back to all items again just click on the X. On the right hand side is where all the history items are. So this is each time you do something with a piece of data it will be recorded in this uh, history bar here. Um, you can get some more detail on each item by clicking on its name and this gives you some summary details. And here we have the top few lines of the file so that's quite useful so you can just see at a glance what that file is. Um, this is useful if you want to download uh, the uh, data to your desktop for example and this gives you details about what was done to produce that history item at least from the point of view of Galaxy. If you want an even more detailed view of the file you can click on this eye icon and this will show you up to one megabyte of data from the file so if it's a vast file uh, don't worry, it will just show the, the top few lines. 
the pencil icon is useful because you can add your own annotation to the data so you can change the date uh, the, na the name of the file if you so wish the info portion here is usually filled in by Galaxy itself but if you want to own, add your own notes and annotation which I really recommend you do because it will help yourself at a later date and other people so you can just uh, put in notes here ok so what else is there uh, you can click on that again to shrink it if you've produced an item you're not really interested in you can delete it but you can retain it at a later date which brings me to this cog at the top and so for example like I just said if you delete something you can retain it or regain it by clicking on include deleted data sets it is quite easy sometimes to accidentally delete an item but you can get it back by this method okay in my demonstration we're going to assume that I've already performed some of the steps already mainly due to time constraints so the first step was the con quality control of the unmapped reads from the sequencer and this was done using a tool available on our system called FastQC and FastQScreen uh, the first one's good because it gives you information about the read quality which is important sometimes you see that reads uh, read quality degenerates uh, towards the end of a read if this happens throughout a sample then the poor quality regions can be truncated uh, FastQ screen is useful because it can detect uh, evidence of contamination from other genomes however what it doesn't do is tell you anything about contamination from the same genome now probably the most time consuming step of a chip seek analysis is mapping uh, the reads to the genome of choice uh, so I've taken the reads and I've mapped them to the mouse genome MM9 using a mapper called Bowtie again this is already available on the Galaxy system now it's a, a general rule that you'll want to get uniquely mapped reads this means for each read it only maps to one location on the genome Uh, this is generally because you want to have a, a good confidence that a read really is where you think it is if it maps to multiple areas of the genome then you can start to have some uh, worry that it's not really where you think it is so I've already done this mapping step uh, also what I've done is I've used all the available sequence for the mouse genome if you ever look into this you'll see that there's sequence for for example chromosome 1 to 19 X and Y but then there's another set of so-called unassembled contigs that contain the words random or chromosome un uh, these are uh, pieces of sequence that although they're known to reside in a particular chromosome have been excluded for various reasons uh, you also want to include the mitochondrial genome because even though different procedures may try to exclude the mitochondria there's always the chance of contamination so the reason for contain, uh, including the unassembled contigs in the mitochondrial genome is so that when you map the reads if there's uh, uh, reads in your sample that belong to those areas if that sequence wasn't contained 
in the reference genome then you might get um, incorrect mapping so we retain all those extra sequences but remove reads to those areas downstream now usually with for example a lane of a Illumina sequence run you can get around 35 million reads and that's quite a large number to deal with so for the purpose of this demonstration I'm just looking at reads that belong to chromosome 1 so I'm going to draw this particular video to a close now and in the next video we will be downloading some pre-prepared data from the shared data area of Galaxy and continue the chip seek process um, if you watch this video and you've got any comments then please let me know I really appreciate that and thanks for your time